Hello and welcome. Today I'm excited to share a project um, using these file folders and some of the scraps that you see there around me. I, As I go through all the scraps, I'll explain um, what I'll be doing. So I have been a part of a Facebook group started and coordinated by Nina Ribina. Um, she has a YouTube channel and um, I have learned so much from her. She is amazing. I love watching her videos. She puts out a prompt every week um, on her YouTube channel and then um, you can post you know, pictures of your uh, take on the prompt in the Facebook group. And a few years ago, she also joined with Kylie Koo, by the way, who's on a leave right now and isn't able to participate at the moment. But anyway, um, Nina is going on vacation and she asked for a couple of people to cover for her while she's on vacation. So I am so excited and amazed that I got selected to be one of the two people um, to cover for her for two weeks. So this is the first video that I'll be sharing um, for the Facebook group and the prompt. I, I also, I forgot to say, the other person is Anne from Curious Moon Designs, and I will post a link to her YouTube channel below so you can see her project. Um, so the first prompt we decided on for this week is birds, bees, and botanicals because, um, you know, it's very alliterative and um, who doesn't like birds, bees, and botanicals, right? The only thing missing is butterflies, but Nina already had a butterfly uh, prompt not too long ago. Anyway, as you can see, I am putting um, some scraps on the file folders and um, when I do something like this, uh, which I consider collaging, I guess, I like to put a lot of uh, take out um, scraps and papers and that I might use around me so that I can, um, you know, test out things to see how they look as I'm doing there. And also, you know, it's less overwhelming if you pull out some things that you might want to use um, than you know, going through your whole stash of stuff, trying to find things to use. So if you have, you know, a few bits of your stash around you, I find it to be much easier to put something together. So my idea was partly based on Nina's master board um, videos. She's done several. Um, and what I thought I would do is make the background for my journal um, using these bits of paper. I was trying to stay mostly neutral but with bits of color here and there and then I'm going to cut down these folders into the pages for my journal and then decorate them with the birds, bees, and botanicals. So you'll see the process. Oh and then I, I have a um, I'll show you how I bind it with the tab binding. I've been wanting to make a journal using this method for a long time, so I thought this would be a good time to do it. So when I'm collaging like this, um, I it's really just an intuitive process. I cut papers and in different sizes, uh, different shades. They might be neutrals, but they're different shades of neutral. And I just place them, it's just a feeling whether they look good or not. And, you know, everyone has different um, opinions of what looks good and what doesn't. So, you know, it's really up to you to decide how you want to arrange your papers. And um, the other thing I found about collage is that the more you do it, the better you get at it. Not to say that I'm great at it, but I feel like I'm a lot better than when I started. Um, just like anything else, you know, you practice something and you get better at it. So, um, again, I'm trying to stay neutral uh, because I'm going to add embellishments on top of these papers. You'll see that later on. I'm using my glue stick. I'm using a hotel key card to... Um, just make sure the paper is 
kind of flattened out. There aren't any bumps. If you use a glue stick, I find a glue stick works fine, uh, but you can use any glue that you want to. But if you use a glue stick, just make sure you cover the entire back surface of your paper so you don't have any bubbles or you know places that you miss. And I do miss a few corners that I have to go back in and glue down. But for the most part, it works great. And um, this is a little journal for me, so it doesn't have to be perfect either. So that's what I'm doing, just um, putting my papers down. I'm trying to move quickly without overthinking. I'm a master at overthinking things, so when I do these projects, again, I try to just move forward, and I know that if I make a mistake, a so-called mistake, or if I do something I don't like, it can always be fixed. And I'll show you that later, too. So here's my board, or it's not really a master board. Here's what my file folder looks like. And I'm going to trim the um, edges, trim all those papers off around the edges. And I'm going to do the same process on the other file folder I have, because these are going to be the pages of my little mini journal. Once I trim those and make the other file folder, which I believe I show you next, I'm going to cut those down into um, the pages. And of course I'm saving those little <laughs> scraps <laughs> for later use. I find it difficult to throw anything away. Um, before I do the next uh, file folder, I am saying that if you have little spots where you think it needs a little more, you can add pieces like that to make it a little more interesting. And I'm going to add a little few more pieces here and there. I'm adding some washi tape also. Um, I end up adding, uh, spoiler alert, I end up adding some washi tape that really looks terrible to me, but I end up fixing it at the very end. So stick around to the end of this video to see. And there you can see the washi tape um, that I added on the left side underneath that little girl. I really dislike that a lot. I'm adding bits of paper doilies now also to add a little bit of interest. I tried that piece out, but I didn't like it. So there's that little piece of doily and so there's my finished first folder and there's my second that one is not embellished quite as much I learned my lesson not to try to put everything on one page and I like it I like both of them really so I'm showing you how I'm going to cut them I'm going to cut them down to strips like that and I had a couple of little leftover pieces, which I'll save just in case I might use them somewhere else. And I used that tag to judge the width of the pages. I thought that was a good width, even though I'm not going to make my papers into tags. So there I've cut those, trimmed those, cut those down, basically cut the strips in half. And I'm just showing you how they all turn out. I think they look really good. I love doing this process because, you, but I hate that washi tape, because um, I think it just turns out so good no matter what, and like I said, if you mess up, you can always cover things up, see, like that. So um, I'm going to use, on the back of those pages, I'm going to use scrapbook paper, and I decided this was probably a good use of Tim Holtz scrapbook paper, he has beautiful ones, and I have this paper pad that has a lot of florals and birds, and I will show you what it's called, wallpaper, um, a paper pad. And then I also have this beautiful Tell the Bees um, wallpaper, I mean, uh, scrapbook paper made by um, Craft Consortium. I, this one is a special edition. I don't think it's made anymore. It's probably difficult to get, but um, of course you can use any kind of paper you want on the back of your pages if you do this project. So I'm just showing you how that turned out. I'm not going to go through every single page now, but at the end I'll do a little flip through and show you. I love the way that turned out. So the I decided the next step 
is I really wanted to decorate the cover and have a front and back cover. So my next idea was to use that little cardboard type of frame. It's also a Tim Holtz piece. Um, and I quickly decided that that was the piece I was going to use. I, this one, this hardly ever, my covers never come together this quickly. I'm so happy that this all came together right away. Look how nice that looks. So I'm going to glue uh, those, uh, the, the frame onto the little scrap of uh, scrapbook paper and then I'm cutting little strips of fabric to show you that that's how I'm going to start to bind it and I wanted to see how the frame looked on the with the little scraps of fabric. I kind of spent some time uh, going through that but um, I won't show you all that. I decided to go ahead and glue everything moving ahead quickly and so uh, you can see I glued the frame onto the paper and now I'm going to glue the paper onto my first page which will be my cover for my journal. I'm still looking at the scraps trying to figure out where to glue that paper and then I decided to just go for it. <laughs> so there I go. Now I'm using um, my um, glitter glue dries clear and a lot of you probably know this glue but if you don't it has no glitter in it it's just the name of the um company and it's called dries clear because it dries clear <laughs> and it's really strong when you put it down it dries pretty quickly and it grabs quickly too so you have to be very careful you only have like a second to move it literally <laughs> so then i edge my um cover with brown distress ink which you can't see uh, what I'm using but it's just Tim Holtz brown distress ink I like that look I like vintage and I like distress things and then I'm going to start showing you the binding process um, I do I do like a bit of sewing in my journal so I sewed those little pieces that's completely optional of course you don't have to do that and I chose a piece to use as my back cover because I thought they coordinated nicely all right so here's the tab binding process first of all I have to get my pages in order so that's what I'm doing right now and I'm just kind of um, trying not to repeat like two birds in a row although they won't be right next to each other and just quickly trying to decide how to order my pages that's important you have to have the pages in order in the order that you want them before you start this process or I guess you could do it as you go along but it's a lot easier if you have them in order so I do this pretty quickly and then we will start the process you can see on the left I have cut a bunch of strips. Um, you use three strips on one page, two on the next, three on the next, two on the next, and so on. You can obviously count the number you need, but I like to wing it. <laughs> so I just cut a bunch of them, and then at the end I had to cut a few more, but it worked out just fine. So now I'm figuring out where to put my three strips on the first page. And basically you just want to spread them out so that you have enough room in between each to put two more strips, which will become a little clearer in just a moment. I ended up having to trim my pieces because they were too wide. So I don't know if you can tell that they're a little bit narrower there. So I'm going to start gluing them down. And again, this process, this is the way I like to work. I like making junk journals which are not perfect I love mixed media because it doesn't have to be perfect um, I'm not the kind of person that's good at measuring and doing things pr very precisely so I just glue them down so you put three pieces there I just glue them down and they're a little bit wonky but I love that look actually so you flip your cover over with your three pieces and then you put your two pieces there so now you can see how you want your two pieces to be able to fit in that gap and now you glue those two pieces down and then once you glue those down you see the next step you flip your page over again like you did the first page 
And by the way, if you want to use another glue, you could use fabric tag. You could probably even use a glue stick on this too. Okay, so you flip that over and then you take your three fabric tabs from the front and glue those down onto your second page. So you don't glue down the two that you just put down, you glue down the three. Hopefully this is making sense. I'll show you a couple more pages so you can see the process. And besides fabric, you could use tape, you could use ribbon, you can use any number of things. Okay, so I glued down my three. Now I'm gonna turn it over. You can see there how it's looking. And I'm gonna take my next page and lay it down there. And now, because I did two fabric tabs on the previous one, I'm going to do three on this page. And again, you want them to line up so that they can fit in between the other tabs. So now I'm gonna glue down my three, and you see I'm not being exactly, exactly precise, but um, close enough for me. <laughs> Mostly works out nicely. So once you glue those three tabs down, you're going to flip your page over again. And I'm getting glue all over the place. I ended up with glue all over my fingers at the end. So you flip your page over, again, line them up, and then you're gonna glue the two tabs from the previous page down. And that's how that works you continue in this fashion until you reach the last page and I'll show you how you finish that up. It's pretty easy. But um, it's a little bit easy to get confused about the tabs at times, so just take it slow and steady and you'll be fine. I'm doing another page here to just show you, make sure the process makes sense. Um, I did get confused at one point doing this, almost glued down the wrong tabs, but like I said, if you just take it slow and steady, it's not that difficult. So now I'm putting two tabs down, laying that page down, lining them up, and I'm going to glue down the three tabs from the previous page. I hope this is making sense to everyone. You can do those tabs looser than I did also, so your journal is a little bit looser and maybe if you have, you think you're gonna put a lot of things on your pages, you might wanna have more space. Um, but for me, I think I'm just gonna do paper collages here and I, I think it's gonna be fine. So I glued down those three. Everything's looking pretty good so far. That's how it looks. And now, uh, let's see. I'm just continuing with the next one. I'm gonna put three tabs down and so on. Okay, here's where you get to the end. So this is the next to the last page. I have two tabs from the previous, so I'm gonna do three tabs. And I have my back cover there I'm showing you. So I'll do three tabs there, glue those down. Just like before, I had to trim one down. And I had one leftover <laughs> piece. So I glue those three pieces down. And flip that page over, just like before. And then since I just glued down three, I'm gonna take the two tabs from the previous page and glue those down. You'll see that in a moment. That's a little uh, too much on top of each other, so I just trimmed that one little piece down so I would have enough space. I had to do that a couple of times in my journal, but like I said, I think it looks fine. You can't even tell that, really, when you look at the spine. So you glue down the two pieces from the previous page again, and then now that you're on your last page, the back cover, you don't glue any pieces to that back cover. You put it on top of your journal. I just had a little piece of paper that was coming undone. And you glue your last three tabs onto that back cover and you're all done. 
Now you could finish anytime you wanted to. You don't have to have all these pages. I tend to overdo things, so I actually planned on making this journal a little bit smaller, but this is the way it worked out. And it happily worked out that I had three tabs at the end, because I think that makes it a little bit stronger. But you could finish with two tabs too. It doesn't really matter. So there's my little book, and now I want to decorate it a little bit more. And on the cover, I thought I would add a title. And I found this uh, another Tim Holtz <laughs> piece of, it's like a chipboard sort of uh, wording. And sometimes those pieces are a little bit thick, thicker than I want. So I can, you can just tear off layers off the back. And I like the way that looks. And I also distress it with some brown distress ink and glue it right down there. And so far, I'm really loving the way this came out, and um, I just love this process because I really didn't plan too far ahead, but um, I just kind of take it as I go along, and things always seem to work out. It's so much fun for me, and I feel like I need something up there, but I don't know what it is. I still really hate that washi tape right there, and I'm just showing you... Um, some of the pages, well, just one page really, and how I have some items, again, spread around me that I might use to collage on the pages. So I think I'm going to show you, you can also use lace on any of the pages. Um, you can use a lot of things. I'm going to show you a quick, quick little page that occurred to me as I was looking at these items spread around me. And um, those are, um, this is a bee related page, I decided to put together. So I'm going to use that paper on the background and that little um, beehive um, embellishment, a bee that is also from a Tim Holtz package. <laughs> this could be a Tim Holtz uh, video. And I like to use these labels. So I'm going to use a label to kind of pull it together and glue everything down. And here is uh, my journal. I found that little bird, another lucky thing, and glued it there. I really like the look of tabs. I finally covered that washi tape I hate. <laughs> There's the page I put together quickly, and I made a couple of um, more tabs there with labels glued onto them. Just cut those out of the scraps that I had left over from backing from the scrapbook paper that I used to back the pages. So always keep your scraps. I really like clips too, so I put that clip there and I'll use that. I'll clip something on there at some point. So I will continue working on this journal and I'll probably make another video at some point showing how I collage on some of the pages because I'm so in love with my little book. <laughs> and that's it. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.